ever gazed at a mountain and wondered how it got there? Or marveled at the vastness of oceans and questioned how they formed? Welcome to a journey that will take us around the world to explore the physical patterns that make up our incredible planet. These patterns are everywhere, from the tallest mountain peaks to the deepest ocean trenches. They're formed by natural processes that have been shaping our world for billions of years and by human activities that are changing our landscape in the blink of an eye. Let's begin with the land under our feet. There are mountains, plateaus, plains and valleys. Each of these landforms has its unique physical characteristics, and each one has a story to tell. Mountains, for example, are often formed by tectonic forces deep within the Earth. These forces push the Earth's crust upwards, creating majestic peaks. Plateaus, on the other hand, are flat elevated areas that have been lifted by the same tectonic forces, but in a different way. Plains are large flat areas that have been smoothed over time by the forces of weathering and erosion, while valleys are often carved out by the relentless flow of rivers. But it's not just natural forces at work. Human activities like mining also play a role in shaping our landforms. When we extract resources from the Earth, we alter the landscape, creating new patterns that can be seen from space. It's a complex process, with each change leading to another creating a never-ending cycle of transformation. And while these changes can sometimes be destructive, they also create the beautiful and diverse landscapes that we treasure. So next time you see a mountain, remember the incredible forces that shaped it over millions of years. Ever thrown a stone in a lake and watch the ripples spread out? But have you ever thought about how that lake came to be? Water bodies are the lifeblood of our planet, and they come in all shapes and sizes. From the vast oceans that cover more than two-thirds of Earth's surface, to the majestic river systems that weave like arteries across continents, these water bodies are a testament to the incredible diversity and dynamism of our world. River systems, for instance, are like nature's highways, transporting water from highland areas to the sea. Along the way, they carve valleys, deposit sediments, and create fertile plains, constantly reshaping the landscape. The Amazon River, the largest river system in the world, is a great example of this, stretching over 4,000 miles and draining water from nine different countries. Drainage basins, on the other hand, are areas of land where all the water that falls eventually flows to a single point, like a river or a lake. The largest of these is the Amazon Basin, which spans a whopping 7 million square kilometers. Then there are lakes, serene and tranquil, cradled in the earth. Lakes can form in a variety of ways, from tectonic activity to glaciation to even meteor impacts. The Caspian Sea, despite its name, is actually the largest lake on earth, with an area larger than Germany. And let's not forget the oceans, the giants of the water world. These vast bodies of water, teeming with life, regulate our planet's climate and play a critical role in the water cycle. Natural processes like changes in rainfall, melting of glaciers and erosion constantly shape and reshape these water bodies. Human activities too, like constructing dams and irrigation, have a profound impact. For instance, the Hoover Dam in the United States, one of the largest dams ever built, created Lake Mead, a massive reservoir that supplies water to millions of people. So the next time you drink a glass of water, consider the journey it has taken from a distant glacier or an underground aquifer. Do you know why it's cold at the poles and hot at the equator? Let's unravel the mystery of climate patterns. Our world is a tapestry of climates, each with its unique patterns and characteristics, from the sweltering tropics to the freezing poles, the temperate zones to the arid deserts. Each region has its distinct climate, shaped by various natural processes and human activities. Let's start with the tropics that are around the Earth's equator. It's always warm here, with temperatures rarely dipping below 20 degrees Celsius. The tropical climate is characterized by high humidity and heavy rainfall, especially in rainforests like the Amazon. This is due to the sun's rays hitting the equator directly, causing high evaporation rates and thus frequent rain showers. Venture further from the equator and you'd enter the temperate zone. Here the climate is moderate, not too hot, not too cold, with distinct seasons. Spring, summer, autumn and winter. The sun's rays hit these regions at a slant, leading to milder temperatures. The Mediterranean, with its warm dry summers and cool wet winters, is a classic example of a temperate climate. Now imagine going even further towards the poles. You'd find yourself in the icy realms of the polar regions. It's cold here, really cold. The sun's rays are spread over a larger area, resulting in less warmth. 
Think of Antarctica, the coldest place on Earth, where temperatures can plummet to minus 89 degrees Celsius. At the same time, human activities also play a significant role in shaping our climate. The burning of fossil fuels, for instance, releases greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. These gases trap heat from the sun, leading to a rise in global temperatures, a phenomenon we know as climate change. This is causing glaciers to melt and sea levels to rise, altering climate patterns across the globe. Deforestation is another human activity impacting our climate. Trees absorb carbon dioxide, a major greenhouse gas. When forests are cut down, not only is this vital carbon sink lost, but the carbon stored in the trees is released into the atmosphere, further exacerbating climate change. Then there are natural processes like ocean currents and wind systems that influence our climate. Ocean currents driven by the wind distribute heat around the globe. The Gulf Stream, for instance, carries warm water from the tropics to the North Atlantic, making Western Europe warmer than other regions at the same latitude. Wind systems, on the other hand, move air and moisture around the Earth. The trade winds blowing from the northeast in the northern hemisphere and from the southeast in the southern hemisphere play a crucial role in regulating our climate. So, the next time you feel a chilly wind or the warmth of the sun, remember the complex climate patterns that make it all possible. Ever wondered why grasslands, forests and deserts exist where they do? Let's explore the world of vegetation patterns. Our world is a vibrant patchwork of different vegetation regions, each with their unique characteristics. These regions include the extensive grasslands, the teeming boreal forests, the lush tropical rainforests and the starkly beautiful tundra. Grasslands, for instance, are found in areas where rainfall is moderate, not too much and not too little. This is just enough to support the growth of grasses, but not enough for large trees to thrive. The African savanna and the American prairies are examples of grasslands. Boreal forests, also known as taiga, are typically found in colder climates like Canada, Scandinavia and Russia. These forests are dominated by coniferous trees that can withstand the harsh, freezing winters. The tropical rainforests, the Earth's green lungs, are found near the equator where the sun is strong and rain is abundant. This combination creates a hot, humid climate that supports a wide variety of plant and animal life. The Amazon rainforest is a prime example of this vegetation region. The tundra, on the other hand, is found in the coldest regions of the world, such as the Arctic. The extreme cold and long winters mean that only the hardiest plants, like mosses and lichens, can survive here. But these vegetation patterns aren't just carved by Mother Nature alone, they're also shaped by human activities. Climate change, erosion of topsoil, deforestation, the use of chemical fertilizers and the practice of monoculture are just some of the ways we influence these patterns. Take deforestation, for instance. When large areas of forest are cleared for agriculture or logging, it doesn't just remove trees, it disrupts an entire ecosystem. The loss of forest can lead to soil erosion, changes in local climate and loss of biodiversity. Similarly, the practice of monoculture, where a single crop is grown over a large area, can degrade the soil and make it less fertile over time. It also makes the crop vulnerable to pests and diseases, which could potentially wipe out the entire harvest. But it's not all doom and gloom. Humans also play a positive role in shaping vegetation patterns. Land reclamation projects, for instance, can turn degraded land into productive farmland. And the planting of trees known as afforestation can help restore forests and offset some of the impacts of deforestation. So you see, the world of vegetation patterns is a complex and fascinating one, shaped by a delicate balance of natural processes and human activities. It's a testament to the resilience of nature, but also a reminder of our responsibility to protect and preserve it. So the next time you walk through a forest or a field, take a moment to appreciate the intricate dance of nature that made it possible. Does a desert affect the climate? Does a mountain affect vegetation? Let's delve into how different aspects of the physical environment interact. Imagine you're standing in the middle of a vast desert, like the Sahara. The air is hot and dry, and the landscape is dominated by rolling sand dunes. Deserts, with their extreme temperatures and sparse vegetation, have a significant impact on climate. For instance, they can influence wind patterns. The hot, dry air rises, creating a high-pressure system that can push winds towards other regions. Now, let's travel to a completely different environment, a mountainous region. The Rocky Mountains, for instance, are not just a majestic sight, 
but also a fascinating example of how landforms affect vegetation. As we move higher up the mountain, the temperature drops and the air becomes thinner. This creates different zones of vegetation, from dense forests at the base to alpine meadows in the middle, and finally to barren rocky landscapes at the peak. These patterns aren't just created by natural processes though, human activities play a role too. Consider the rainforests of the Amazon. Deforestation, driven by logging and farming, is drastically changing this environment. As trees are cut down, the climate changes, rainfall decreases, temperatures rise, and the lush rainforest slowly transforms into a savanna. It's a stark reminder of the impact we can have on our environment. Water bodies, too, interact with the physical environment in fascinating ways. The Great Barrier Reef, off the coast of Australia, is a prime example. This vast coral ecosystem is shaped by the warm currents of the Coral Sea. But it also shapes the environment around it. The reef acts as a barrier, protecting the coastline from wave erosion. However, human activities like overfishing and climate change-induced coral bleaching are threatening this delicate balance. But it's not all doom and gloom. In the Netherlands, humans have been shaping their environment in a positive way for centuries. Due to the low-lying nature of the land, much of the country is under constant threat from flooding. To combat this, the Dutch have created a complex system of dikes, canals and pumps to control water levels. This has not only protected the land but also created new habitats for wildlife. And then there are regions where different aspects of the environment interact in truly unique ways. The volcanic regions of Hawaii, for instance, show an interplay between landforms and vegetation. The rich volcanic soil provides a fertile ground for a diverse range of plant life, but eruptions can also wipe out entire ecosystems, only for them to slowly regrow in the aftermath. So, the next time you marvel at a landscape, remember the amazing interplay of forces that shaped it. We've journeyed through mountains and valleys, oceans and lakes, climates and vegetation. But what does it all mean? Well, these physical patterns that we see on our planet, from the towering peaks of the Himalayas to the vast plains of the Serengeti, they tell a story. A story of how our world has been shaped and reshaped by natural processes like tectonic forces, weathering, erosion and glaciation. But that's not all. They also tell a tale of how human activities, like mining and land reclamation projects, have left their mark. We've plunged into the fascinating world of water bodies and systems. We've seen how rivers carve their paths, how lakes fill up basins, and how oceans cover more than two-thirds of the Earth's surface. We've learned that these bodies of water are not static. They're constantly changing due to natural phenomena like rainfall and melting glaciers, and human activities such as dam construction and irrigation. Our journey also took us through the diverse climates of the world. We've seen how factors like ocean currents, wind systems and elevation, along with human activities that emit greenhouse gases, shape the world's climate regions. From the sweltering tropics to the bone-chilling polar regions, each has its unique characteristics. We've also roamed the lush green expanses of our planet. We've learned about the different vegetation regions, from grasslands to boreal forests, and how they are influenced by natural processes and human activities. We discovered how deforestation, grazing of domestic animals, and the introduction of invasive species can drastically change these regions. In understanding these physical patterns, we gain a deeper appreciation of our world's complexity and dynamism. It's a world in constant flux, shaped by the interplay of natural forces and human activities. It's a delicate balance and we play a significant part in maintaining it. Next time you step outside, remember, you're stepping into a world shaped by incredible natural processes and human influence. So, go out, explore and appreciate the beauty of our changing world.